What's going on Aberin Garage fans? I'm Anthony and in this episode we're going to be talking about our project truck. Our 1994 Chevy Suburban three quarter ton. We did a solid axle swap on this thing about two and a half years ago we started the project and we wrapped it up and have been driving it for about two years now. So now we want to take you guys on an in-depth look, talk about the parts that we used and the process we went through to go about building this and then you're going to want to stick around at the end because there was a bit of a challenge that we ran into and we want to talk about what we came across and how we got around that. All right, everybody, I'd like to introduce Pandora. This is our 1994 three quarter ton Chevy Suburban. It came factory with a big block engine in it, 7.4 liter 454 and a 4L80 transmission. Being that it's a three quarter ton, we also got lucky enough to get the 14 bolt full float rear axle. And this one was coded to get a G80 or Gov lock locking rear differential. We're going to start off by going over what we did in the rear suspension first and then we'll also talk about how we set the rear axle up and then we'll move on to looking at what we did under the front end of the truck. To get the rear end of the truck up to the level that we wanted it, we decided to go with an off-road design shackle flip in the rear. To get the shackle flip bolted in place, we actually had to get the, the fuel tank out of the way. So that way we can install the hardware to be able to install the, the brackets for the shackle flip. I also installed a zero rate add a leaf, a five degree shim, and a shackle reversal kit, which also came from off-road design. One thing to watch out for with a shackle flip is because you're changing the relationship of the front and rear mounts of your leaf spring, is it will cause a change in your pinion angle. One of the things you're gonna have to do is measure the uh, angle of your output shaft and your pinion angle and figure out what angle shim you need to install. That way you maintain the proper relationship between your axle pinion and your transfer case output shaft. We also chose to go with a new extended brake line that actually came from Skyjacker. We just got it off of Summit Racing. And we also added a pinion guard from Barnes for wheel drive. All right, so when we talk about what's inside the, the housing on this thing, this truck came factory with 373 gears, and that just simply wasn't gonna cut it for turning these 37 inch Maxxis tires that we're running. After doing some uh, gear calculators, trying to figure out what final drive ratio we wanted to wind up with, we decided to go with a 456 gear ratio. The calculator showed to maintain as close to a factory performance as we could get, we should be around a 433. The market has 410 or 456. We opted for the 456 in order to still maintain that sort of factory performance, but give us a little more bite off-road. Typically speaking, for a truck like this on 37s, you wind up seeing people running either 488 or 513 gear ratios, and that was just way more aggressive than we wanted to go because we plan to see a lot of road time with this truck, we want to drive to trails, we want to drive to campsites and stuff like that. And we didn't want to be over spinning the motor to maintain a decent highway speed. To complement the new gear ratio, we decided to get rid of the G80 locker. Uh, the, while those generally can be good for a factory size tire, they're known when you get into the larger diameter tires for grenading, hence the nickname GovBomb. In order to delete that gov bomb, we wound up picking up a new uh, differential carrier from Motive Gear, brand new part, not a remanufactured or anything like that. And inside of that new carrier, we installed a Yukon Grizzly locker. Now this is an automatic locker. When it senses a difference in uh, torque from one tire to the other, it automatically locks up to make sure that you're getting full power through both rear tires. One of the concerns that 
I had going in with an automatic locker is they tend to be a little finicky on wet roads. We do get a lot of coastal fog being that we are on the central coast of California and that does leave us with a lot of mornings with wet roads. The automatic lockers are known for making the rear end want to come around on, on corners. This is not something that so far I have experienced as being problematic in any way. All right, so to round out the rear end of this Suburban, there's two more things we got to talk about. One, shocks. These are not gonna match the level of what we had up front. But we wound up going for the time being with some Rancho RS9000 shocks. They do have some uh, compression adjustment built into them. The other thing that we need to talk about back here is the the overall width of this axle and the bolt pattern on it now i know we haven't talked about the front axle yet but the new front axle was actually approximately six inches wider than the factory rear axle in this thing it also has an eight on 170 bolt pattern where this truck came with an eight on six and a half so to try to rectify both of these situations with one solution we wound up going with a uh, an adapting wheel spacer and we chose to go with the Bora wheel spacers. These adapters are two and a half inches wide. They are hub centric, so they're designed to fit around the hub of the axle, as well as have a shoulder for the, uh, the hub of the wheel. And they convert the eight on six and a half lug pattern to that eight on 170, enabling us to utilize the same wheels front and back Okay, so now that the rear end is done, we'll move on to the front. Up front, this axle came out of a 2008 Ford F350. Now being an 05 plus super duty axle, it's a Dana 60, which will perfectly complement our 14 bolt full float that we have out back. To hang this axle underneath the truck, we decided to reach out to WFO Concepts. They had, just prior to us reaching out to them, debuted a new radius arm system with a three-piece cross member setup that bolted into the factory frame in place of the factory transmission cross member. This three-piece cross member came integrated with the radius arm mounts built into that cross member and being that it's three-piece you can remove the transmission uh, from the truck without having to remove all of your front suspension which I think is a great feature that they built into that, that cross member. All right, so pretty much the entire front end on this thing, other than the axle, brakes, uh, wheel bearings, stuff like that, came from WFO Concepts. We're running coilovers that they spec'd out. These are actually intended for a, a Duramax truck, but because of the weight of the big block, they actually work very well in this application. In addition, we've got their coilover towers, reservoir mounts, track bar, uh, mounts both on the frame and the axle track bar itself and drag link all came from WFO in addition to the radius arms and the transmission cross member in order to get power from the transfer case down to the axle we reached out to Tom Woods drive shafts gave them the specs that we needed based on the information that they provided to us from their website and they built us a custom 1350 CV drive shaft for this thing and that thing works phenomenally. No vibration, no, no issues there at all. Okay, to round out our front end, this Day, uh, Dana 60 had an open front differential. We decided to go with a Torque Masters Torque Locker. It's a lunchbox style automatic locker. We also did a full rebuild, installed 456 gears up front to match the back. And we sealed everything up with a Rough Stuff Specialties heavy duty diff cover. And we had to put all new brakes on this. It came uh, from LKQ online with no brakes on it. So we went with Power Stop Evolution rotors, Power Stop uh, calipers, and their semi metallic brake pads. Okay, so I promised you some information on a couple of uh, things that we ran into, some interferences and complications that we ran into along the way. The first complication that we ran into is actually on the passenger side of the truck. The air conditioning lines that come off the compressor that go to the evaporator inside the dash of the truck actually ran into the coilover tower. Because those are aluminum lines, we were able to relatively easily put just a nice little bend in those and get those to clear the coilover tower. However, on the driver's side of the truck, 
we had a more substantial complication. Again, dealing with the coilover tire. All right, guys, so this is what I'm talking about right here. This bracket, you can see right over here in this area, we had a big complication right there and the whole ABS module hanging down actually came down. You can see I tried to make it work, tried clearance of the bracket and it was just all over that coilover tower. So we just decided cut that thing out, run it without ABS. Let me kind of see under here how close that bracket is just to keep that windshield washer tank mounted there. We actually no longer have anti-lock brakes on this thing anymore. We've hard lined from the factory uh, proportioning valve. We maintained the factory master cylinder and proportioning valve on this. Uh, ran new lines to both front uh, calipers and ran a new line to tie in to the factory line going back on the frame to the rear axle. Guys, I really hope that if you're looking at doing a solid axle swap on an OBS Chevy like this Suburban, I hope this provided some insight into some of the things that we went through and helped give you some good ideas and some inspiration for your build. If you have any further questions, please feel free to drop a comment below. I'd be happy to answer anything that you have. This has been a very fun and fulfilling project for me and I love to share my adventure, my journey and my the information that i learned through this process with anybody that's looking to do something similar if you found this information helpful please consider subscribing and hitting the notification bell so you don't miss more stuff that we're going to be doing on this truck in the future thank you so much for watching this video and i hope that you will be back to join us again soon